welcome. Termites, termitos. <laughs> I'm out on the road, meaning Stevie, not me. Well, I'm on the road, yes, this week. You're on the road too. Yeah, but Stevie's going to do Hyde Park in London in July. How exciting will that be? Oh, where are all the little European fans? Hello, I've got stories for you. Some are super long. Wow, you're starting to get like her. I saw the Barbie car. Uh, Stevie. Remember when you uh, your Barbie car up? The Barbie, oh, yeah, there's a video. She's got the th doll in the Barbie car and it comes out. And then she's oh, like, get her out. They're having an accident. I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, termites. Termitos fire. Episode 179. <laughs> what are we drinking? First of all, we're having a little harp. Nice Irish beer, last of the Irish vacation beers. Found that in the golf bag. Nice. Boom. Boom. That was for um, Tom, the caddy, mm -hmm. and he forgot to drink his. He's adorable. He was adorable. Okay. All the caddies were adorable. Um, he looks cute. They all have like 18 jobs. That's just one of their many jobs. And they're all five handicapped golfers, which is even crazier. And then they never get to golf because the fancy courses won't let them play when they're off, which is horse shit. <laughs> Why can't you just let them go out it? Horseshit. It's six o'clock, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. It's light till 10, for God's sakes. Um, that's what we're drinking. And what are we going to eat? Well, I can't even believe I'm going to try these, but <laughs> I am here doing the work of the Lord for you people. Cheetos, smoky ghost. Now, if you know what ghost pepper is, you know not to eat it, and I'm going to sit here and do it. Do you have a chaser? I have, yeah, I have my harp chaser. Okay. Flaming hot. I don't even know what's on the front of the bag. It looks like a tiger <laughs> that's on fire. Um, go, it, oh, ghost! Oh, it's an ad for Ghostbusters: Frozen Empire, a movie exclusively in theaters. Okay. Yeah. Um, wow. Uh, I'm, it's I'm, a weird color. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. This is the kind of shit. Somebody's going to start a thing on TikTok, eat the whole bag, and then there's going to be a dead teenager. Yeah. I mean, how, how do we not know this at the meeting? How do we? God dang, I am not a business person. But you pass this around at the meeting and go, good idea? No, 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 no. This is how children die. Oh, God. The children. Save the children from themselves because yeah. they'll think it's hilarious. <sighs> Snyder's, I love their pretzels. Mm -hmm. Everybody wants to do something Nashville related these days, whether it's music or now it's Nashville hot chicken. That's on every menu everywhere I go in the world. Yeah, and it's I love hot chicken, but only here. In Nashville. Yes. Mm -hmm. I don't once you go out, it's like people say St. Louis style ribs on menus and you leave St. Louis. They're not St. Louis style ribs. No. They're just ribs. Yep. But they want to act like they're special, but they don't know how to make St. Louis ribs. Nope. Anyway, these are pieces of hot chicken pretzels. Two of my favorite things. You combine them. <laughs> no. 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 No, they taste like that orange dust. <laughs> Whatever the... A lot of things have orange dust. No. Okay. The work of the Lord. Okay. Jesus. And yeah. it's early in the morning. I'm burning my face off. <laughs> <laughs> Wait till you try it. Oh, God. <laughs> no. <laughs> this last one is truly the work of the Lord. Yeah. You know when I say just leave well enough alone? I don't know why people can. Uh, Hidden Valley Ranch, which I love. Lou hates it. He always goes, there's a reason that ranch was hidden. I'm like, oh, Lewis. <laughs> Lewis, you're too fancy. Um, has combined ranch with the cheese it and it's the real one because it's their logo. It's sold out at Kroger. It's, okay. This is sold out at, gro at a grocery store. All right, let's see. There, oh, it's God. It looks wrong. Yeah. <laughs> this is another one at the meeting. I'd be, especially if it was a Monday morning, yeah. I'd be like, God damn it. <laughs> No, can't we just go sell some? Can't we make a funny Hidden Valley Ranch commercial and sell yeah. some more ranch? No. Okay. I'm doing this with an open mind. <laughs> it looks like Velveeta. No. Okay. No. It tastes like <laughs> kind of like paint that sat in the can <laughs> too long and you have to stir it with your stick. Ma'am. No, Did no. You shake it? Great for dipping. Yeah, I kind of shook it. Let me give it one more try. Mm. What if it was cold? 
I don't see a point. You look like you're in pain. I don't see a point to it. Yeah, there's things keep happening on your tongue after you eat it where it just explodes. But maybe the children will like it. Maybe. I'll have to wait. I'm going to save this okay. and wait for teenagers to come. And then I'm going to put it out uh-huh. and, and treat them like zoo animals. I'm going to watch to see if they go for it. I'm not going to say nothing. Uh-huh. I'm just going to put it in the middle of a bunch of crackers and stuff. Right. And see if they do it. Um, wait for I need to write this down. <laughs> um, uh, okay. So what has been happening? Well, I spent a lot of time going through my dad's fishing lures that he gave me because it's fishing season. But now I can't go, well, I can go fishing, but I haven't opened my fishing boat in a year right. because I haven't been, You've been, a little busy. been busy. Yeah. Something got in there. Uh-huh. All termites that fish, what could have done this? The boat was covered on a lift. Whoa. Now the very back of, a, of a, a, a bass boat, the flaps don't completely close. They do go over it. Something got in and I think got trapped. Uh-huh. It ate the driver's seat. Yep. There's foam everywhere. Mm-hmm. There was, um, it definitely went to the bathroom a lot in the boat nice. and then tried to scratch at the oh, V. God. I know. And then I thought, oh my God, it's got to be dead. Some, a raccoon. That's all I can think of. Raccoon. Termites? What could do that? The lift was up. Uh, the lift was up. So it had to be able to jump. It's not yeah. like a beaver or no. a river otter or mm. a goose. They might lay eggs. At one time, a duck laid eggs in, they don't have claws. Yeah, claws. I don't know. Um, my yeah, plan was to do all that, and then I was shocked, and then I had to clean all that up, which was disgusting, and I was trying to get the spiders out and power wash, and it's so. all. Can you imagine if Canadian geese had claws? If Canadian geese had claws, I'd have to move because they're already territorial enough, yeah, exactly. and they've all got kids now. They're like, they've grown up. They're teenagers. They're so cute when they're little. Then as teenagers, <laughs> they're still cute because they're fluffy, yeah. and then they turn into adults where they only look good in a painting, and I want to kill them because I Googled it. And they literally shit in a pound an hour. What? Yep. Google gross. it. Gross. They're just machines of, gross. yeah, it's gross. It's all over the, the grass. And I don't, I mean, they're pretty in a painting. Yeah. But, you know, what is their purpose? And then I saw this Canadian redneck who I fell in love with. He got real sick of the geese. You're oh. not allowed to hurt him. And I don't want to hurt him. I just want him gone. Mm-hmm. He built a tiny fence around his cove okay. of barbed wire uh-huh. because... They fly in like like an army, and then they come up like an armada, and they come from the water. They don't come by land. They fly into the lake, and then they come like this. But if they saw the barrier, they'll go to the next cove. That's what I'm hoping. So when my neighbor sees me down there with a tiny hammer, a tiny, tiny barbed wire (laughs) fence, and then he's going to come down and go, Kathleen, what the fuck are you going to do? What are you doing? And I'm going to say, don't you worry about it. I'm protecting everyone's home, not just my own. Thank you very much. I'll bring it up at the next HOA meeting. And the cost of this barbed wire from Lowe's will be incurred to the HOA, not me. So everybody doesn't have to worry about their lawn guy, whoever that may be, running over goose shit or a goose. Um, so that's what, that's what has been happening. Um, I don't, and there's no clean, well, here's what's also happening on doing the work of the Lord. Uh My friend Dax is coming to town. So, uh, we are going to go downtown and go to the Patsy Cline museum, which I will review for all of you. If you've never seen that movie where Jessica Lange plays Patsy Cline and Ed Harris uh, plays her boyfriend, you should go watch it. Um, then we are going to go see, uh, Laney Wilson's new bar. I get open it's, real fast. Huh? It opened real it fast. It opened very quickly. I don't know how they designed. I mean, then you watch the guard show and you're like, I thought it was supposed to take like, you know, a long Three time. Years. Yeah, but hers isn't directly on Broadway. So I don't know. And Morgan Wallen's new bar has opened, and that is not directly on Broadway either. You got it, but it's right next to the Ryman, so he gets points for that. She got the location that I'd go, I don't know. I don't know. It is by the footbridge, so it's the first one you see if you come walking over from a concert or a football game or whatever. Uh Um, I don't know, but I will give you full reviews. So if any termites are ever coming to Nashville Uh um, and want to know my top five, I will give my top five at the end of this because I don't think there's any other new ones opening that I know of. I do know you have to go to Gar's to get Trisha's chicken fingers. I do know that for a fact. I'm going to take Dax there. He's never had it. you got to do it. Oh, so good. So, um... That's it. I have no queen news. Dolly's been very quiet. Ta- oh, Tanya. Please follow Tanya T- Tucker on Instagram. She was giving her chickens a bath in her sink. <laughs> I saw that. 
<laughs> one is named Loretta Hen, as uh-huh. after Loretta Lynn, and the other one's Tanya Clucker. <laughs> Those are the two that we met in that uh-huh. video. She's just a hundred percent exactly. You get share very quiet. Yep. Don't know what's going on there. Nope. Um, Jelly Roll quiet. He's doing stuff, but He's on tour. quiet it's and summer. yeah, they're all out on the road. Snoop, I have um, I have King news about Snoop. Nice. And um. Tay Tay quiet over in Europe somewhere, or is Tay-Tay she just, back? She just did, is uh, she done? Uh, no, God, no, not with Europe? No, not for another month. Another oh, month? Yeah. Where's left to go? Oh my God, Lewis was supposed to do some comedy festival festival in Lisbon. I don't even know why Lewis would agree to that to a comedy festival where English isn't their first language, but he did. And Lisbon forgot that Tay Tay was coming, uh-huh. and they had to cancel the comedy festival oh. because <laughs> she's even ruining other arts. <laughs> <laughs> She's destroying other art forms. I'm the, sure they have crossover <laughs> fans. <laughs> I don't think the comedy, I don't know. The comedy festival, they moved it or something. I don't know, but I know Lou didn't, wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't happening. She was oh. in Madrid. She was in Madrid, but she was in Lisbon as well, yeah. right? Oh, yeah. she's in Madrid. Now where's she going? This is past weekend. Where's she going? Oh, I don't know. Let me tell you. Are we going to go? Um, I'm not going again this, this round. Maybe next time. Maybe when she is 35. Where's she going? Somebody. Oh, she's going to Amsterdam. Amsterdam. Oh, Lewis was just there. Yep. He had a show there, too. Probably had to cancel a lot of stuff there, too. It, it, no, he had that one because that was like a month ago. Oh, okay. He's been gone forever. Uh, she's in Lyon, France. Lyon, France. Yep. Lewis is going to Los Angeles for the premiere of what? Inside Out 2? Nice. Where he plays the what? The part of anger. Nice. That's his voice. Mm-hmm. And he wanted me to go, but I have to work. And even if I didn't have to work. Nope. I <laughs> went once. I did my duty as a friend. I went once. Nah, I would go again. It's just I don't like those red carpets. And just yeah. when you think it's always 75 in L.A., no, it'll be like 102. And then I, what do I wear? And yeah. Right. Yeah. The, she's, yeah. She's in Edinburgh this weekend. They should give him a red jacket. I'm going to call him and tell him he should wear a red jacket for anger. Really? Yes. Yeah. And he looks good in red. red. Yeah. Yeah. He always looks tan and his hair. Well, it's gray now, but yeah. gray yeah. goes good with red. Everything. Yeah, gray goes good with everything. Yeah. I'm going to call him. Tell him he needs to go back to that place and get a red linen jacket. Linen, specifically. Linen. Mm-hmm. Because it's going to be hot. Yeah. But how do you fly it to L.A. without it getting wrinkled? You're going to be that asshole in first class that says, can I please just hang up properly? <laughs> and somebody, everybody's rolling their eyes. Dude, learn how to pack, right? Yeah, I have to have this exactly right. Or it's going to be wrinkled when it gets to Los Angeles. Where am I going? We know where Tay-Tay's going. Here's where I'm going. West Hampton this coming weekend. Boom. Charlestown, West Virginia Casino. Love it. That's June 16th. Mm-hmm. June 29th, Portland, Maine. Nice. I'll be seeing my friend. Peter and his wife. Yep. Um, July 19th and 20th, Borgata, which is, there's a sad update. Oh. No, it's fine. My shows are fine. But I was very excited because I was going to be in Atlantic City when the Jake Paul, Mike Tyson fight right. happened. And Mike has a uh, bell- tummy ache, is some sort of tiny ulcer. Stop it. And they've postponed the fight. Oh. It's breaking news. They have postponed it. Mm-hmm. Um and I cannot believe it's 2024 and I'm Googling Tyson fight. I can't <laughs> believe if you would have told me in 1989 when we all spent $85 and had a house party to watch Mike Tyson mm-hmm. eat somebody's ear off um, that I would have been Googling this in 2024. I would have said you were crazy. Yeah. But so it's not going to happen. But I was so excited because I'd be in a casino. You'll be focused and, now. And I, well, no, I'm still not. I mean, I still wish it was happening because right. I know the casino guys would save me a seat in the yeah. bar with a thing. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, July 26th, San Antonio, Texas. July 27th, Austin, Texas. August, 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 August 2nd. August. August. Yeah. Marietta, Georgia. <laughs> August 3rd, Cincinnati, Ohio. Nice. August 10th, Niagara Falls, Ontario. I can't wait to go down to that little bar and have a beer and sit there and watch Falls. I could do, I could sit there all day. It's so fun. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, Hampton Beach, New Hampshire. That's August 24th. Uh, Labor Day weekend, the Venetian Las Vegas. My sign's already up. My little friend Dorf went to go see, um, oh my God, the dead at the sphere. I mean, uh, if you're a dead person that it was, he said it was by far, uh, excluding the birth of his children, the single greatest night of his life. <laughs> <laughs> of course he, did. 
He's 58. <laughs> just remember that. And he said, oh, I won't even go into what. But he just, uh, and then he tried to talk me into going because they're going, they're going to be there till August. Mm -hmm. I said, Dorf, I, first of all, I don't do hallucinogenics. Yeah. I, do, I do beer or um, seltzers mm -hmm. or wine, but not at the concert. I wouldn't drink wine like that. Unless it's a slow concert, Can like James well. Taylor. <laughs> or, well, Sarah McLaughlin, I'll drink wine. It seems appropriate. Right. Um, but no, I'm not going. No. I know the visuals will be great. I go, you know what I'd rather see, Dorf? March of the Penguins there. <laughs> I want to see fucking penguins all over, above me, on the side of me. Uh -huh. I guess they do show movies there in the day, it, the Vegas sphere. But uh, anyway... He took my picture there. I already had my sign up. So nice. good, good for you, Venetian, if you're listening. Thank yeah. you for the advertisement. Um, uh, September 6th, Terrytown, New York. Uh -huh. September 7th, Wilmington, Delaware. Yep. September 13th, Columbus, Ohio. September 14th, Lexington, Kentucky. September 19th, Oklahoma City. I haven't been there in a very long time. I'm very excited to go see Oklahoma City because that's where they're going to build the world's tallest building. Right. Or the United States tallest building. Right. September 21st, Dallas, Texas. And... Probably tiny update. update going to yeah. add a show in Dallas. Yeah. Termites, are you in? What do yes. you think about that? Yeehaw. Not for sure yet. We got to see what's going on. I can't believe all these people, too. Not comedians. All these musicians canceling tours. Right. J-Lo, the Black Keys. I didn't know J-Lo was still touring. I don't even know what J-Lo does except Jenny on the Block. Right. I, I mean, I, and I thought, really? Isn't she my age? I mean, I'm, I'm my age, but I'm not trying to be a pop star. No. Can she sell out the Bridgestone Arena in Nash Nashville? Are you going to get some backup dancers? Well, if I had backup dancers, um, it might be a little more exciting. I don't know. <laughs> well, how do we feel about that at the end of every joke? That's how I feel about that. That's how I feel about working with anyone. No, this is a solo career. <laughs> minus an opening act. Um, so, no, she canceled the whole thing. Yeah, first she canceled like eight shows, Nashville being one of them. Mm -hmm. These people go into arenas, why do you feel? I think it's because of Tay-Tay. I really yeah. do. I yeah. think they all went, oh, well, I can do it. Mm -hmm. Like, Madonna did it, but come on. Yeah. yeah. Even yeah. even my my friends who went, who are diehards, were like, that was can't continue. No, right. no. Um, yeah. But I think they see Tay-Tay doing it, and then they're like, oh, well, I can do it. Mm -hmm. And then you can't. Watch me. Why does everybody have to be in an arena? I don't, I don't even get it. So, and speaking of music, what are we watching? Mm -hmm. um, go watch the Paul Simon thing. I think it was on Amazon. Oh, cool. it, uh, Just put in Paul Simon movie. I don't remember what it was called. It's okay. a two-parter. Because okay. Lewis goes, well, I saw the second part. I'm like, <laughs> Lou, it's a movie. It's like a two-part movie. I forgot he made You it. needed to watch the first part. Yeah. First. I forgot about Carrie. I forgot about Carrie Fisher. Mm -hmm. I did not know that Art Garfunkel wrote nothing. I thought they Boy, collaborated. No. Oh, no. no Little no. Paul was a brains behind the machine. Yes. However, good luck finding Art's voice again, unless Google Art Garfunkel and his son singing with him. And they, sounds, the and they look alike, mm -hmm. and he sounds exactly like him. Yep. It's amazing. But I, for the children listening, Paul Simon was part of a group called Simon and Garfunkel, um, and they were super great. And then he did so he kept going in his own career. And I meant to Google what happened to Art Garfunkel, but I forgot. I'm curious as to what Art does these days, but he probably doesn't need to do nothing if he's getting fifty percent of all that because it's still being played everywhere. He's, this is a little uh, off track. I forgot to do my update okay. of my King update. I do have a Snoop Dogg update. Can't wait. He's auctioning off his own memorabilia <laughs> while he's alive. This is so great. <laughs> Why didn't people think of this before? Why wait till you're dead? That's like, true. I literally took a whole day, mm -hmm. and I threw two giant trash bags, filled them, contractor bags, full of just junk, mm -hmm. garbage, shit I don't want to see anymore. Mm -hmm. If Snoop Dogg did that, half, probably one of those bags. Is worth a billion dollars. Yeah, you could auction. People want it. Yeah. Right, whatever, for him, not me. Nobody, mm -hmm. want, nobody wants mine. No. no, I take it to the golf course, and I give it to the Guatemalans. Nice. Yeah, the clothes and stuff. Yeah. They get excited. It's probably at some swap meet. They're probably looking at my clothes going, first of all. But they're my height. Yeah. I mean, you we're all same it. size. You gotta give it to tiny people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, anyway. <laughs> um, uh, so most of these items usually go up as an estate thing after they're dead. Mm -hmm. um, and then the, the items end up, end up in the hands of people who knew how to monetize them. And then the profits went to the seller in the auction house, which commonly takes 20 to 30% of the sale. Right, so you don't need that. If you're Snoop, just get online, start auctioning shit off. 
Um, na, 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 na. Some artists have gotten wise to the hustle and refuse to sign autographs, even seeing them pop up on eBay days later for ludicrous sums once too often. Now, one artist is partnering with the new sports and music auction house to take that hustle in his own hands, and that is, of course, Snoop Dogg. Snoop. The iconic rapper partnered with The Realist, a memorabilia auction, uh, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, auction company founded and produced by radio host Scott DJ Ski Kinney to auction off items with his full participation. The offering ra- offerings range from relatively low uh, end items like photos, PlayStations, autograph writers, and Did auto- you say PlayStations? PlayStations, yeah. Huh. Okay. Autographed writers. Well, we've been talking about writers. Maybe yeah. I'll autograph one of mine. We'll do give, I'll <laughs> give it to charity. We'll give it to some um, some charity. Mm-hmm. Um, production books uh, to be autographed, TV scripts of episodes of the Vo- Boondocks he voiced, Platinum disc, master recordings, although the copyrights to the music do not come with the tapes. Ha! <laughs> autograph jackets and jerseys, even a death row records chain and a custom box autograph by Snoop. Cool. Yeah. Like he that. said, this is the shit that we have, but we didn't know it was worth something, Snoop says in the project that he calls the shiznit. <laughs> <laughs> the shiznit. Nice. Good for you, Snoop. Good for getting ahead of the game. Yes. Cutting out the middleman. Especially when you're dead. You don't need people taking money from you when you're dead on top of it. No. As if they're not taking enough while we're alive. Right. Update! <laughs> <laughs> the children are at it again. Uh-oh. Oh, the children. <laughs> this girl, she's definitely one of the children. A climate activist has been arrested for sticking an adhesive poster on a Monet oh. painting at the Museum d'Orsay. Now, I've been there. Huh? It's in Paris. There's two major museums in Paris. Well, there's many, but the Louvre and Museum d'Orsay, Musée d'Orsay, is awesome. Mm-hmm. How did they let this lady in with a poster? I mean, I, I the action, the action by the woman. It, um, this was to draw attention to. I like this one. Global heating, like heating and air, like oh. HVAC, like it's <laughs> the Lord's. It's the Lord's HVAC. <laughs> Mother Nature's HVAC. She's mad about it. Uh, you know, everybody understands there's, there's something weird going on. Yeah, th- they call it the global heating, though, instead of warming. <laughs> it makes me laugh. I'm going to start throwing that out at the mm-hmm. bar to my friend Mark when he starts talking about it. I go, do you mean global, global heating? <laughs> Just to confuse him. Say what? Uh, Kathleen, what are you talking about? <laughs> do you mean heating, not warming? Anyway, um, the action by the woman, a member of Riposte Alimentaire, a group of environmental activists and defenders of sustainable food production, was seen in a video posted on X by placing a blood red poster over poppies, a painting, Mm -hmm. by the French impressionist Claude Monet. In the video, she said the poster was covering Monet's art. This nightmarish image awaits us if there's no alternative put in its place. I don't disagree with these kids. Right. Uh, something's getting weird. Yeah. As, you know, I well, I don't know. I know there's a tornado every five seconds, and I don't have a tornado shelter. I know that. Right. And when I was a kid, there would be like two tornadoes a year. Right. Whether you're in Kentucky, Tennessee, Missouri, whatever. Mm-hmm. Now there's one a week. Right. And the sirens only work the first Saturday every month when they're being tested. They don't work when the tornadoes <laughs> it's come. It's actually happening. No. Um, well done. But this is not the way to do it. I mean, yeah, you got attention, and then people go, you're a jackass. Why would you go, ru-? you know, what, there was glass in front of it. So technically it's not ruined, but this is, there's just got to be a better way. Right. Humor wor- gets more flies than anger. Okay. So if you want to attract more people to your cause, why don't you start getting funny? That sounds like a merch idea. It is a merch idea. Mm-hmm. Monet's painting completed in 17, uh, 1873 shows people <laughs> with what? umbrellas. Wow. Strolling in a poppy field. It's protected by glass. Musea Dorsey did not say immediately they didn't respond. Um, she reclaimed she claimed responsibility. And then there's all the other tax. And you know oh, and she has a, a shirt on that says like four so it's obvious this kid's up to something. Mm-hmm. This is not a normal shirt. It's like a protest sh- t shirt. Right. Um, you know. Stop the kid. She's up to something. She's up to something. <laughs> that's, what they, that's why they need old people like me sitting there going, nah, I don't like that shirt. It's the one place you could just be totally free to say whatever. Right. At security. 
Yeah, I don't, I don't yeah. like, I don't like her shirt. I find it suspicious. <laughs> <laughs> um, this article was amended because earlier, mistakenly, they said the paint, painting was not behind glass. That's the other thing. Now we got to put everything behind glass, right? Because you guys are letting people in with soup and he's of posters. I mean, thing. come on, security. Yeah, the soup thing's out of control. Um, that was my mic off. That ties an update, but we already did that. Update. Oh, I forgot to say what else I was watching. Okay, so what? This was this is a really good one. This was on Netflix. It's mm -hmm. called A Nearly Normal Family. Okay. I started watching it. I thought, why is there duping and looping here? Mm -hmm. And then I'm like, oh. People might not know what looping is. Uh, well, when the they're talking, the words aren't matching their mouth. Mm -hmm. Um, they go in and redo it. Whatever. <laughs> What's a, it was? They're Swedish actors. That's why it's good, though. Cool. And the you do not notice it after a while. It's about a murder, and if anybody does that correctly, it's the Swedes. It's so creepy, and it's only like five episodes, so you're not commit maybe four. You're not committing to a whole lifelong thing, okay. a nearly normal family. And then the other one, Ripley, my friend Drew told me about, mm -hmm. but then Lou was like, well, I couldn't even watch it. I thought it was too pretentious because it's in black and white. I go, why is it pretentious just because it's a right. white? Right. He had a million other reasons. I said, well, Drew told us the first episode is hard to get through, uh -huh. and then it gets good. Right. 100% agree with Drew. Okay. Um, five stars. Five stars on Ripley, five stars on A Nearly Normal Family. Okay. I think Ripley's on Amazon. and Ripley is on Netflix. Oh, it's on Netflix. They're both on Netflix then. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I did watch a lot of the hockey, and I'm just stating here for the record – for non-sports fans, it's only take a minute. I've been trying to watch the French Open. Because uh, my friend Lorene, um, yeah, that's tennis. <laughs> um, it, she loves it, and I try to keep up. But I can't keep it's. I don't, I'm trying to keep up. But the hockey, <laughs> my prediction is Florida will win the Stanley Cup. Okay. I would prefer to see Edmonton because it's been too long and Canada deserves Canada it. Canada needs it. Paddles. Yep. yep. Yep, Connor McDavid needs to light it up like the Michael Jordan that he's supposed to be. He yes. did have one magical play in the game last night, but he we need a lot more than that. Everybody. The Panthers are like 12 years old. Watch out. They're on fire. They're so young. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> and the basketball, I barely keep up, but I'm predict pr predicting a Boston uh, Celtics win. Really? Mainly because... Uh, Jason Tatum. No, just because the people on... Uh, First take, say so. Your boyfriend. Yeah, my, yeah, Stephen, Stephen yeah. A. Smith. I'm just copying. Yeah. yeah. Jason Tatum's from Missouri. Jason Tatum is from Missouri, so I should root for them. Yep. Yeah, I don't have a team. Yeah, clearly. <laughs> Ever since Michael Jordan and Charles Barkley quit, I was like, eh, I don't really like it anymore. Yeah. <laughs> I'm the worst basketball fan ever. I totally jumped on the bandwagon with Michael <laughs> Jordan. And then there was Dennis Rodman. There were just so many people that were yes. so interesting. You couldn't look away. No. And then uh, Carl Malone, all those guys. And yeah. then, I don't know. It just, it was a hard act to follow. Very Maybe they're picking it up. I'll watch the finals. I'll, I'll commit to that. Okay. <laughs> if it's Go. on in a bar. Go <laughs> Update! <laughs> we have more crazy billionaires. Oh, boy. Ready for this? Uh -huh. A year after Titan sub, remember the Titan sub implosion? Oh God, yeah. An Ohio billionaire says he wants to make his own voyage to the Titanic wreckage. When are you people going to realize some spots are jinxed? It's a cemetery. Leave it alone. And let's not spend all your money on this. No. Um, a billionaire from Ohio, um, he had his idea just days after Titan met its fatal end. Patrick Leahy, a fine Irishman, mm -hmm. is going to potentially kill himself for this. Co-founder and president of Triton Submarines is no stranger to deep dive expeditions. He was always oh, a second Canadian. Oh, no. A Canadian billionaire. Yeah. Well, this is your fault, pal. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Fault. He's going to visit the bottom of the marina trench. And, 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 and nearly 30, 30, 30, 30. He told the Wall Street Journal he spent years working on making submers submersibles. That's submersibles, that's a hard one to say. Safe for deep dives, making sure his company vessels were certifiably safe. Then when last year's implosion happened... Uh, killing the vessel's overseer and captain, uh, and the kid. Let's not forget the kid. Right. There were concerns that nobody would trust such uh, exhibitions. So he's going to do it. It's unbelievable. Um, <clears throat> yeah. 
uh, I mean, why, why, why would you do that? Why? We have movies of the Titanic. Right. We know what's down there. We have the There's, movies. it's all over YouTube. You could go watch, see anything you want. You want to see the kitchen? They'll show you the kitchen. You want to see the steering wheel? They've got, I don't. I like the Leonardo DiCaprio version. Oh, go watch the movie. <laughs> yes. Kate Winslet was great. Well, Leonardo well, DiCaprio, yes. adorable. Mm -hmm. Um. This guy's been, uh, the, the remains of the Titanic are 12,500 feet underwater, giving the sub just enough certified range to reach it. The imploded Titan sub was not made of, acry not made of acrylic and only had a certified range up to 1,300 meters. You can't defeat M meters, guys. Who wrote this article? That is bullshit. <laughs> Did the BBC write this? No, CBS. One or the other. One or the other. Mm -hmm. They haven't said when they're going to do it, but they're doing it. That's unbelievable. Update! Now, here's something that's worth the time and money. Okay. China is playing nice. And we're getting two more pandas Yay! in D.C. Now I can't believe I ran over and saw those pandas before they were uh, departed and I deported. They were cute. They were very cute. Yeah. I just didn't have a lot of time that day. And the zoo was extremely crowded because it was a Saturday. I don't usually do things on the days the general public does everything. No. No. You're I'm a Monday, a Monday person. Solid Monday person. Solid Monday. Solid Tuesday. <laughs> I'm out, I'm out, I'm out. <laughs> Two new giant pandas coming to the Smithsonian's National Zoo and uh, Conservation Biolo Biology Institute. By, by the end of the year, China's wow. sending them. Sure Let's see who's coming. Um, uh, hold on, I'm going to tell you who's coming. Okay. Uh, what their names are. This is part of the program that we've always been talking about. Oh, hi, baby cat. Meow, 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 meow. Um... Come on, I'm looking for the names. I'm sorry. Oh, here, here's who we're getting. Okay. Bao Li. Bao Li. Bao Li, okay. B-A-O-L-I, is a two-year-old ma male, Bao Li, whose name means treasure and energetic Aww. in Mandarin. That's sweet. Yeah. 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 Um, Bao Li's mom was born in 2013. His grandparents, Tin Tin and Mi Zing. <laughs> I'm sure I'm reading these really <laughs> wrong. Uh, they yeah. lived at... NZCBI from 2000 to 2023, where they served as ambassadors. The other one, King Bao. <laughs> <laughs> no, not King. Queen. Oh Queen. It's a Q. Queen. <laughs> Queen. Queen Bao. Two-year-old female, which her name means green and treasure in oh, Mandarin. Wonderful. Yeah, obviously ba Bao part means treasure. Right. And the first one, yeah. See how I'm putting this together like a crossword? No problem. No. Um... Uh, they currently live in Wolong, and the other one lives in Xi'an. We may need. Do we have a termite that speaks Chinese? No, just say well, my niece, uh, Sienna, studied Mandarin. I'll call Sienna before I read these articles. What would a Chinese-speaking termite be? We have a Chinese-speaking termite? Yeah. We have termitos? Would be a termite. <laughs> a termite. A termite. <laughs> Chinese speak well. You don't have to be Chinese, but if you're Chinese speaking, I'm just Mandarin. gonna call you Mandarin. Yeah. A mermaid. <laughs> mermaid. <laughs> uh, FedEx uh, is gonna transport them. I wonder if they come in a box or you gotta sign for them. You think you have to sign for them? No, no, just leave them at the front gate. Uh -huh. We don't need them signed for. I hate signing for shit. There's always a note. When we came, we came to it for you. Just leave them. Um, they'll be quarantined for um, 30 days upon arriving. Yep. And then the public date um, has not been set. But by the end of the year, that's what we're hoping. Okay. <laughs> update! <laughs> I have an Anna Dalvey update. Oh, I have yeah. another one. I have another one. Anna Sorkin, Anna Dalvey, whatever you want to call her. Oh. She doesn't really care. Oh, no. Fake heiress Anna Sorkin, the convicted con artist and fraudster who fooled New York's social elite, has released a country song. Stop it. Stop it. <laughs> She'll probably have her own bar down here by next week. <laughs> yeah. Where are you going? Anna Delvey's? Where, who's that? <laughs> uh, the lady who talked like this on the Netflix show. She's we're, a fraudster. We're totally you fraud. lied to one of the biggest banks in the world. That's not fraudster. No. That's too cute, you little fraudster. <laughs> You're a fucking criminal. And um, it. Yeah. And, and a felon, I believe. <laughs> Country song. Um, she teamed up with TikTok's TikTok songwriter Brooke Butler and the band Audio Chateau for the song while under house arrest in Manhattan. 
titled Want the Hell. It will be featured as the intro song and theme song to her podcast, The Anna Delvey Show, according to Deadline. Oh it's a two-and-a-half-minute track that includes vocals by Sorkin recorded from a phone call she made while imprisoned on Rikers Island. She can be heard saying, my name is Anna Delvey. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well, I'm going to go listen to it. I'll give you a full review. My name is... Shh. My name is... Shh. The new track uh, will get radio airplay. He, the, the producer guy thinks thanks to her notoriety, what got, which got posted by the Netflix limited series Inventing Anna. Uh, the series dramatized her infiltration into the New York society by pretending to be a wealthy analyst, chronicling how she dipped off major financial institution. <laughs> ripped off. Yeah. Two hundred seventy-five thousand dollars, fraudster. fraudster, fraudster. Please update. Okay, I may owe my Southern Missouri ends a tiny apology. Bigger? No, cause I'm not sure. Okay. <laughs> so these yeehaws that tried to auction off Graceland without permission and run away with the money. Mm -hmm. Who said they were from Missouri? Well, they were registered in Missouri. And all signs pointed to Missouri. Mm -hmm. Well, now a Nigerian rip fraudster <laughs> company mm -hmm. is claiming they did it, but they just want credit. You got to prove you did it. Uh -huh. Somebody's going to find out who it is, <laughs> if they even care enough. I mean, it's so ludicrous. They may just let everybody off the hook. I don't know. They're the new Taliban. My friend Michael <laughs> Somerville said, I miss this one. I don't know, but... Um, um, Okay, That's funny. so Nossany Investments was the company. The records indicate it's connected to Missouri and Florida, but searches with the Se Secretary of State's office in both places so the, show that the business is re not registered in either. I mean, how you can file a, 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 a lawsuit mm -hmm. without your company's being real, right. somebody should have caught that. Somebody, I don't know who. Um, Nossany no, Investments you know claim... Right. She said, fuck no. Well, Riley caught it, but I'm saying but yes. somebody should be in trouble for filing a fraudulent lawsuit to begin mm -hmm. with. Yeah. Um, Nazi Investments claims Lisa Marie took out a $3.8 million loan and it, int it intended to collect by auctioning off the estate. Then Riley said this is all bullshit. Um, there was no loan money and Graceland was never on the table. The smoking gun was a notarized deed of trust between Lisa Marie and Nazi. Um uh, but now there's a Nigerian guy mm -hmm. who's saying, we did the whole thing. We steal, that's what we do, mm -hmm. and we went big. Well, there you go. Um, right. You know who they are. The, the question is, um, who, who will show up when this case goes to court? We will present our side of the, case, of the case on Wednesday. At that time, if anyone shows up, we will respond to anything they assert. So they're just going to get away with it, it yeah. sounds like. Uh -huh. I'm going to stay on top of this, termites, because that, number one, is the funniest story I've, I've ever read that that's what they're trying to do. But it, and the Nigerians are smarter than that. You know what? They steal perfectly. Everything. The, uh, yeah, I almost fell for one to win a Yeti backpack. <laughs> <laughs> I did. And I thought, Kathleen, don't be your mom. Go yeah. look at the email that said it. And it was like, foodie cray cray. I'm like, well, okay, this is a Dick's Sporting Goods. Because it said Dick's Sporting Goods. And it, looked, it was like, click here to start. I'm like, I, I'd like a free Yeti backpack. Sure. And then I was like, stop it. I didn't do it's it. Flashing. But flashing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, nice. Update. Update. Um. I'm, I don't know if you guys are bored with me talking about restaurants that are failing. All I know is <laughs> last night when I poured Olive Garden Ranch on my salad at home, I'm really going to be sad if Olive Garden goes under. Yeah, well, I'm going to have to go hoard all that Parmesan Ranch. Mm -hmm. it's, it's so good. It's, good. it's a perfect summer, too. It's light enough once you mix it all up. But um, and, and breaking news, one of the renovated Cracker Barrels is not far from my house, and I'm going to be going. Really? Yes. I'm going to make a video. Cool. And then we'll see. It's this ready. this podcast takes action. It doesn't just sit here and read shit. Work I go out there and I work the story. We need pancakes. That's right. Yeah. I love when you go in. It's Some of them, they're like, we have Bloody Marys. And then they explain what a Bloody Mary is. I'm like, oh, my God. If you have to explain to people, Keep up. they shouldn't have one. No. Here's a little update 
about Red Lobster. Okay. okay. Are you angry that your favorite Red Lobster closed down? Wall Street wizardry had a lot to do with oh. it. See, it's not just the, the shrimp. No. Red Lobster was, we know all this, it, uh, on May 19th, it filed a bankruptcy following closing almost 100 locations. They had legions of fans and 36,000 workers. Assigning blame for the company's failures is tricky, but some analysts of the root of Red Lobster's woes was not the endless shrimp promotions that some have blamed. Yes, the company lost $11 million from the shrimp escapade. It's a lot of fucking shrimp. <laughs> I would have just loved to have been in the post meeting. Okay, whose idea was the endless shrimp again? Bob, Bob, you were $11 million wrong. You have misjudged the fatties in this country. You have misjudged America's will to eat when shit is free. You, you're fired. It's a challenge flag. Um, yes, the company lost all that money and suffered from inflation. Oh, we can't blame inflation because then everybody would be closed. Right. Higher labor costs, same thing everywhere else. But a bigger culprit is um, a finance financing technique favored by a powerful force in the industry known as private equity. Whoa. The technique... This is hard. Stay with me, termites, because okay. my head exploded a little bit when I read this. Tiny. And then it was like tiny bit, like. Right pew, pew. above the eye. Yep. The left eye. Yep. Right there where my <laughs> septum is deviated. <laughs> um, it's colloquial known, colloquial uh, known as asset stripping has been part of a retail chain failure such as Sears, Mervyn's, and Shopco, as well as bankruptcies leaving hospitals and nursing home operations like Stewart Healthcare and Manor Care that had all been owned by private equity. You know who one of the king of private equities was? Mitt Romney. Yes. He's a big private equity guy. Yep. Asset stripping occurs when an owner of an investor in the company sells off some of his assets, taking the benefits for itself and hobbling the company. Yes. Yeah, because they did it with, uh, what is it, Staples or Office Depot? Oh, uh, he was Staples, uh, I think. Was he Office Depot? No. Google Mitt Romney. Um, oh, Mittens, yeah. Mittens. There's no employees. No. I could walk into office, uh, both of them. Well, Office Depot even more. Because yeah. if I go in there to get paper and all that. I mean, there's nobody working there. I feel sorry for who's ever left. It's like abandoned. I would just turn on my own music and make it like a disco and start serving shots. Staples. Staples. He yeah. was Staples. Yeah, that's not. It's a dumb name. So they strip all the assets and then take the money. Um, a common sense of asset stripping is known as sale leaseback and involves selling a company's real estate. This type of transaction hobbled Red Lobster. So they took the land and then made them rent. Yeah. I mean. That's helped. Uh, I mean, why? why, why? Wait, you do, wait, I think they just want to kill them. I guess they want to kill them and take the money. <laughs> um... The sale leaseback to help sink Red Lobster was involved in the July 2014 sale of the premium real estate underneath 50 of its stores. I mean, 500. So 500 stores, they sold the real estate the, the building's on. Wow. So now they have to rent to stay yeah. on the property they owned, which generated $1.5 billion. But the money didn't go back into Red Lobster. It went into the private equity firm to finance its purchase of the chain, Red Lobster's. Oh, my God. Uh, why do they allow this shit? I don't know. So it's not just... America being super fatties. No. We are. We ate eleven million dollars extra worth of shrimp. We like shrimp. I love shrimp. So <laughs> love it. Holy shit, they found it. <laughs> Man finds mammoth skeletons in his wine cellar. Stop it. <laughs> I would start digging here. All yeah. I'm, all I'll find is civil war stuff if I find anything. Right. The remains of three Stone Age mammoths have been uncovered within an ancient wine cellar. Proving, providing incredible new insights into how ancient humans have may have hunted the extinct beast. Describing the find as the most specific, significant of its kind in over a century, researchers have said the bones are probably 30 to 40,000 years old. The discovery was made by Andreas Pernerstoffer while renovating his wine cellar in Goebelsberg, which lies to the northwest of the capital of Vienna. After coming across what he initially thought was a piece of wood, he remembered his grandfather telling him, that teeth had once been found at the site, leading him to suspect that the item may have been of prehistoric age. Wow. That's so uh huh. It's been a hundred years since anything comparable to this find has been unearthed in Austria or its neighboring countries, and the bones from those digs are usually lost to modern research. However, Goebelsberg does have form when it comes to Stone Age relics, as 
flint artifacts, jewelry, and charcoal were discovered in this cellar next to Pern's store for some 150 years ago. <laughs> you imagine you're just going to go redo the basement. You're like, yeah. oh, look, I found a mammoth. It's crazy. Yeah. I like it. All right. There you go. There's another one. This one. Holy shit, they found it. Dinosaur hunter stumbles across million-dollar fine. It's every child's dream to wander into the garden and come face to face with a real life dinosaur. Mm, that would not have been my dream. No. 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 How about a beagle? I don't need a goddamn T Rex. Who would want that? Who would want that? What kind of dream? What kind of nightmare is that? I walk out and there's a giant lizard. <laughs> it's going to eat me. It's not a nice lizard. Mm -mm. A carnivorous lizard. Wow. <laughs> you never know. So hold on. This guy encountered dino, uh, this guy goes around the Southwest. He likes to look for things. Um, he never came across a specimen quite like the one he stumbled upon a couple years. An animal so massive that it, if it, it appeared on a London street, it would measure up to an old double decker route master bus. Though you'd want to be careful which one you boarded. Ho, ho, ho. It was an enormous <laughs> stegosaurus in excellent oh. condition. For a beast that spent the past 150 million years uh, below ground, cool. it's being auctioned off for shit tons of money. It's almost 11 feet tall and fully 27 feet from the top of its head to the tip of its scaly tail. Hmm. Yeah. It was his 45th birthday, and when his friends asked what he wanted, he declared the best gift would be a new dinosaur, so they set out. As they walked up the side of a mountain, he spotted a femur bone sticking out of a rock wall. We looked around, my friend said, uh, I found some vertebrae. I said, oh my gosh, this is turning out to be a really great birthday. <laughs> wow. Nerds I, gone wild. Yeah, well, yeah, but we need them. Um, it's going to go under the hammer, set to f uh, fetch millions of dollars in New York. See, no, this should be in a museum. Right. Why are we going to auction this off to some crazy person? Where are you going to put it? Where? It should be in the Smithsonian. It should. News <laughs> for all of you evil Knievel fans. Uh oh, I'm one of them. Are you related to him? Well, I'm not blood related. He was a cousin by marriage, so my dad said, and I couldn't believe that after I sat there and watched all those jumps my whole life as a child on shag carpeting in the Midwest, staring at. If you do not know who Evil Knievel is, I do not blame you, especially if you're one of the children. <laughs> evil was a daredevil. We don't really have those anymore. Yeah. Because people just do dumb shit all day long on TikTok. TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> That's why when the government gets so mad, they're stealing all of our things. Yo, look what they have to plow through to get to it. <laughs> look at the shit they got to watch. Um, <clears throat> uh, he jumped the Snake River at the Grand Canyon on a motorcycle. He did crazy ass shit. And he really did these things. Mm -hmm. um, he jumped like a thousand buses in Los Angeles. It would be a big Saturday night special. He broke every bone in his body. I mean, he crashed a lot. I'm shocked he never died. And then his son became evil. There was an evil, evil junior king. or baby evil. Baby evil. Call him baby evil. I like it. I like it. it. Yeah, baby uh, evil. He kept it going. But nobody cares about daredevils anymore. But he was the, the one. Evil can evil. The museum is moving to Las Vegas. <laughs> he was kind of handsome, too. The Evil can evil museum is in Topeka, Kansas. Did you guys know that? What? Yes. Hi. It's gearing up to close its doors this final time for a final time this year. The museum's de dedicated to motorcycle daredevil Robert Craig Knievel, known uh, known as Evil Knievel, spelled E V E L, not like evil. Evel. Evel. Mm -hmm. um, it helped bring tourism to the city. It will close. It will be moved to Las Vegas and open sometime in 2025. Um, they have mixed it. feelings. This is our hometown. We've been proud to represent it. Uh, to have it reside in Topeka for the past seven years. We welcome de de guests from over 80 countries. That's great. Um, yeah, to I don't... Topeka? Well, to, to, to Topeka? I know. They might be exaggerating a I little bit so. on the books. Yeah. Somebody, your, yeah, where's your blood yeah line paddles from? go in and sign like you're somebody from a different country every day. Just pick a country. Um, yeah. So I can't think of a better place to display the legacy of evil than Vegas. Yeah, he did most of his... Um, Added family brand owner and Las Vegas resident Kelly Knievel, son of Evil Knievel. He wrote that on Facebook. With guts, charisma, and showmanship, he built a legacy. This is still going strong 50 years after that crash at Caesar's Palace. We've all got we've got all my dad's memorabilia plus the latest and greatest razzmatazz. 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 Who still uses that word? Wonderful word. Fitting for the king of daredevils. <laughs> 
I don't know. Why was it in Topeka? Is that where he's from? See if see where Evil's from. Well, I don't know. He <laughs> married somebody in Arkansas that my dad said somehow was related to us. Uh -huh. I don't know. A lot of rounding there. Yeah, there's a lot yeah. of rounding. But, you know, he didn't seem to make it a big announcement. So, um, it didn't really. Where is he from? Butte, Montana. Huh. <laughs> okay. Butte, Montana. Back then, yeah. nobody was from Butte, Montana that no. ever left. No. I guess Evil got bored. Oh, there's a sign there. Put, put why is the Evil Can Evil Museum in Topeka? Yeah. This is why I need my phone on, because I just go, why is the Evil Can Evil? And I just yell it into the phone, and it yells back at me. Mm. It's the most Google thing. Why? Uh, why, why, why? That's my second beer. Good girl. That's great. Oh, he ran his first race. He ran his first race in Winfield, Kansas. In Winfield, Kansas. That seems a little lax. Maybe nobody else wanted to pick it up. Maybe. Um, you know what? We'll update this next News. Week. I know about this album. I haven't heard about it in a long time because I love the Wu-Tang Clan. I do too. I love them. Such a great uh, biopic too. I know. The world's rarest album to go on display in Australia. Nice. It's the Wu-Tang Clan one. Do you really? remember this? Yeah. Housed in an ornate silver box, Once Upon a Time in Shaolin, recorded in secret by the Wu-Tang Clan over six years ago, was designed to be a piece of fine art. Only one single CD copy exists. Really? Yep. Whoa. I remember when they auctioned it off. The record by Pioneering Hip Hop Group is the most expensive ever sold. Currently, it's on loan to Tasmanian, Tasmania's Museum of Old and New Art. Over 10 days in June, Mona will host small listening parties where members of the public can hear a curated 30-minute sample of the the album is part of the names dropping, name dropping exhibition, which examines status, notoriety, and quote the human pursuit. <laughs> also known as social media. Uh, I would look at that and go too hard. Let's see what's in the next room. Yeah, what is the human pursuit of what? Of what? What am I pursuing? <sighs> Every once in a while, an object on this planet possesses mystical properties that transcend its material circumstances. Said the curator wow. of the thing. Once Upon a Time in Shaolin is more than just an album, so I knew I had to get it to this exhibition. Formed in Staten Island in the early 90s, Wu-Tang is said to have revision of revolutionized hip-hop forever, wow. but it's also known for their violent, sexually explicit lyrics. There's a lot going on there. I am. Yeah. 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 I am. Okay. Um, the record, uh, recorded in New York City, was produced between 2006 and 2013. It includes the nine surviving members of the group and features Cher... Oh, ah! and Game of Thrones actress Carice Van Hooten. <laughs> Not sure which lady that was. No. It includes a hard cover, hard hand carved, hand carved nickel box, and a leather bound manuscript containing lyrics and certificate of authenticity. It's beautiful. And it's beautiful. and oh yeah, gorgeous. it's it is gorgeous. It's unique. Uh, it's a unique original rather than a master copy of the original. As a result, only a handful of people on the planet have ever heard snippets of the 31 tracks. A group of potential buyers and media heard a 13-minute section in 2015. And disgraced drug firm executive Martin Schrickle, I hate that guy, Schrickley, yeah, whatever. I forgot about him. He bought the album yep. for $2 million and he streamed clips of the music on YouTube to celebrate Donald Trump's 2016 election victory. He was later forced to hand it over to the United States prosecutors in 2018 after being convicted of defrauding investors it was then sold to Digital Art Collective Pleasure. In a statement, Pleasure said the, moaning listening, the Mona listening parties, which will run between these dates, whatever, um, we're not going to be in Tasmania. Um, God. But we uh, could. Just I'm not going to Tasmania. No? No. Man. New Zealand's too far. Okay. I've been to Australia. Everybody says uh, New Zealand's, like, more wild, which is appealing, but it's just too far I could just go get lost in the woods in Tennessee. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. There's no reason for all that. Um, big news for the children. Okay. There's going to be a millennial saint. Stop it. Yes. Yay. Yes. 
Now this is gonna be probably a five minute deep dive, termites. So if you're not interested in how one becomes a saint and what happens, go get another drink, go get another drink or go to the bathroom. Whatever you wanna do. Go pet your cat, go pet your dog, come back in five minutes. But I've always, especially being raised Catholic and going to Catholic schools, the process of becoming a saint, I could not stop laughing at. Well, most of the things I was taught, I could not stop laughing mm -hmm. in a good way. I'm not saying, I don't know, maybe it's true. It's just, we put so many rules on things. Sometimes it would just be easier to be a Baptist. I'm just saying, oh. there's a lot of rules, a yeah. lot of things to learn. That's when people like say, well, well, how come you guys don't know about the Bible? I had to learn 10,000 saints, 10,000. Yeah. Yeah. And there was no Google. No. And then there's a thousand that are patron saints, which means they're specifically in charge of a thing. Yeah. Lost items, mm -hmm. travel, mm -hmm. entertainment, toothache. uh, toothaches. Mm -hmm. There's a two, you, and there was no Google. So I had to remember, I had to learn that this is what I spent my time. This is a corporation. Yep. These are the people in charge of these departments. A lot of VPs. A lot of, oh my God, they went a, a little crazy with the VP <laughs> titles. This is how you become a saint. You ready? Yep. Step one. Careful. Wait yep. five years. Oh, shit. I don't want to burn down the house. No. Um, step one, wait five years or don't. <laughs> uh, the process to make someone say you cannot normally start until at least five years after you're dead. So, okay. you gotta be, but like Mother Teresa, they fast track that one. Okay. Just saying. This allows time for emotions following the death to calm down. Another one, we don't want anyone hysterical nope. getting involved. All right. And to ensure that the individual's case can be evaluated objectively. Uh -huh. Some have to wait a long time before they reach Catholic sainthood. St. Bede, the, the theologian, he died in 735, but had to wait 1,164 years before he was declared a saint. Well, wow. that's some bullshit for St. Bede. Yeah. Right. <laughs> St uh, the waiting period can be waived. Um, the uh, Pope Benedict, the 16th set aside the waiting period for his predecessor, John Paul II, 2005. This was uh, thought to reflect the overwhelming hierarchical support of John Paul II, blah, blah. John Paul also uh, fast-tracked Mother Teresa, and her th th process began two years after she was dead. Okay. Step two, hmm. uh -oh. become a servant of God. This is where I fall out. Yeah. This I is. I mean, I'm doing the work of the Lord. You are. But not full-time. No, I have to earn a living. A lot of cheese dust. Yeah, I'm eating a lot of cheese dust, mm -hmm. shit that's probably going to kill me. Well, over the, once the five years is up, or a waiver is granted, I love that we have waivers. Right. The bishop of the, dia uh, of the diocese where the person died can open an investigation into the life of the individual to see whether they live their lives with sufficient holiness and virtue to be considered for sainthood. Mm -hmm. Other religious groups to the di uh uh, can also ask the bishop to open the investigation. Evidence is gathered on the person's life and deeds, including witnesses, uh, witness testimonies. The closest I could have ever been is St. Francis of Assisi because I really love animals. Yeah. I could have done animals all day, okay. if that counts. Mm -hmm. um, even his statues, he's always holding a squirrel or some shit. Mm -hmm. I like it. Yeah, weird Big animals. Fact. Yeah, they're not the normal. No. It's not just your regular no. run-of-the-mill, you know, short-haired cat. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. But he probably figured everybody else taking care of those. Um, once a case is accepted for consideration, the individual can be called a servant of God. Step three. Uh -oh. This is where it gets super hard if you okay. want to be a saint. Mm -hmm. Show proof of life. Pro show proof of a life of her uh, of virtue. The Congregation for the Causes of Saints scrutinizes the evidence of the candidate's holiness. Work and science that people have been drawn to prayer through their example. If the congregation approves the case, it's passed on to the Pope. If the Pope decides the person lived a life of heroic virtue, then they can be called venerable. 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 Popes who have bestowed the title of venerable include Pope Paul VI and Pius the Eleventh. no, 12th. 12th. Mm-hmm. It also includes Irish nun Catherine McCauley, who founded the Sister of Mercies, Bam! that's who my mom worked for, and the Scottish nun Margaret Sinclair. Step four. This is where it gets really hard because you have to do things after you're dead. Oh, God. Yep, that's asking a lot. The next stage is beatification. Okay. 
A miracle needs to be attributed to prayers made to the individual after their death. So when I'm dead, if people pray to me enough, I got to do something for them. Okay. And if you can prove that I did it, I'm on my way. The, prayer, the prayers being granted are seen as proof that the individual is already in heaven and hence able to intercede with God on others' behalf. Wow. Incidents need to be verified by evidence before they accept it as miracles. In the case of John Paul, Vatican experts examine the medical evidence of allegedly miraculous cure from Parkinson's disease of a 49-year-old French nun, Sister Marie Simone Pierre Norman. Sister Marie said that her and her fellow nuns prayed for the intercession of Pope John Paul after his death. Her sudden cure had no logical medical explanation. Cool. That counts. Yeah. Now, if you, you have to do two of those, though. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. We want to make super-duper sure this wasn't a fluke. And that you're awesome. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, there is an exception to the miracle requirement. If you're thinking, can you do it? Uh-huh. A martyr, Joan of Arc, uh-huh. someone who died for their faith, can be beatified without a verified miracle. Okay. Yeah. That's a lot of this is what we're spending. A lot of loopholes. A lot of loopholes, yeah. a lot of meetings, yeah. a lot of information. Step five, canonization. It's the final step in declaring a diseased person, a deceased person, a saint, <laughs> a disease. disease. To reach this stage, a second near miracle needs to be performed um, and attributed to prayers to said person. Okay. Uh, martyrs, however, only need one miracle. Oh, you still need one. One. God dang, I died for the faith, not enough. Nope. Um, I got burnt at a stake, not enough, <laughs> Kathleen. That was a good effort, but you know what? I don't think you're giving 100%. Nah. I think you're giving 75%. I'm not sure about all this. Like, <laughs> The second miracle of John Paul um, was an inexplicable recovery of a Costa Rican woman named Flora Beth Mora from a serious brain illness. Okay. Yep, she said he did it. He did it. Okay, so that's how you get to become a saint. In case you didn't know all that. Ooh. Too hard? Um, no. I like Too that. hard? Nope. I like to keep this podcast light and easy and breezy. Well, we got an Italian teenage commu- computer wizard set to be the first saint of the millennial generation. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. It's so great. Are you kidding? <laughs> <laughs> Nobody manifests like Mindy. <laughs> um, <That's great. laughs> 15-year-old Carlos... Ecutus, an Italian boy who died of leukemia in 2006, lies in state, uh, in a state of being beatified. He's already been beatified. We fast-tracked him. He's been beatified okay. by Cardinal Agnostio Valini in Italy on 2020. Pope Francis has paved the way for the canonization of the first saint of the millennial generation on, thir- on Thursday, attributing a second miracle to the kid. Cool. Here's what he did. Um, he was a computer wizard, blah, blah. He was born in London and then he, and then moved with his Italian parents to Milan as a child. He was the youngest contemporary person to be beatified by Francis of Assisi in 2020. Well, how old was Joan of Arc when she died? Google that. Wasn't she like 11 or some shit? They always act like she was 48. Joan of Arc. She was young. 19. 19. Mm, This guy beat her. Maybe just say 12. Well, maybe back then they're like, she's a witch in Salem. The girl's nine. Whatever. Let's burn her at the stake and her mother, too. Her mother's 24. Uh, um, The Pope Francis announced he's going to convene a a meeting of the cardinals to deliberate the canonization of uh, Acutus. I guess that's how you say it. Acutus. Acutus? Tudors is a patron state of the internet. He's going to be the first one of the internet. Yes. Now I know who, well, not yet. He's not saying yet, but I'm going to pray when my computer's on the fritz. This is who we have to pray to. You can't say on the fritz then. On the fritz. Because you sound 100. I am 100. I am 100. I didn't use the word razzmatazz. That lady did. Um, I'm going to pray to Carlo. I like it. Yep. He's a patron saint. Now, to be a patron saint, I'm going to tell you about that. It's not hard. That's an easy one. Okay. But he's going to get that <laughs> moniker. He used his natural tech talent to create a website to catalog miracles and took care of websites to for some local Catholic organizations. He was a self-starter while in elementary school. He taught himself to use code using a university computer science tech book, and then he learned how to edit videos and create animation. 
Well, so, cool. so it, it is very cool, yeah. but so far I'm not seeing. I agree. If I'm at the meeting, totally agree. I'm open mind. I'm open to it, but you're just telling me he made a website about Catholicism. <laughs> is that enough? Okay. Joan of Arc is burnt at the stake. Times have changed, Grandma. People who took vow of silences their whole lives. Mm -hmm. This is... And we're it, appreciative of that. <sighs> Doesn't matter. Um, there's one miracle already attributed to him. The healing of a seven-year-old Brazilian boy from a rare pancreatic disorder after coming into contact with uh, one of his relics, a piece of one of his T-shirts. I read about that. I mean, uh, you know. A second miracle... Recognized on Thursday is related to a woman from Costa Rica who in July 22 made a pilgrimage to his tomb in Assisi to pray for the healing of her daughter who had severe head trauma after falling off a bike. Okay. The woman reco um, recovered immediately. As a small child, he showed st strong religious devotion that surprised his non-practicing parents. You know, that's oh. sort of well, yeah, my one nephew's insistent that they go to church mm -hmm. no matter what. Yep. Wherever the hell we are, he flips out if we don't go on Sunday. You're no, even when he was like six. Yep. Now the rest of the week he doesn't act like that. Right. He's not all pious. What's he doing? I don't know. Maybe he's the next one. I mean, I'm like, what? We're this is being dominated by a seven year old. I have to get up <laughs> at seven o'clock and take a shower on a Sunday yes, because yeah. We need to make him right. <laughs> um. Uh, uh, his curiosity pushed him to study theology in order to answer his question, blah, blah, blah. He was buried in Assisi at his own request, having become an admirer of St. Francis of Assisi for his dedication oh, to the poor and animals. Nice. Yeah. His body, clad in a tracksuit and sneakers, has been on display for veneration in a sanctuary in the town. And his heart has been displayed in uh, the Basilica of St. Francis. Yeah, why'd you take yeah, his heart out? Right. I don't get Just it. To make sure he's there. I don't know. <laughs> I so a lot of questions. Well, there you go. For the children, one for the children. <laughs> if he died in two thousand six, well, I don't know when he was born. Okay. Well, he was fifteen when he died. So do that math backwards. I can't do that. What? Forget it. It doesn't okay. matter. Um, <laughs> he's uh, a child. There's ten thousand saints, and we're really not sure. Like some people were actually made saints and then some weren't this is why saint christopher got caught up in all of his problems about they, they took away his sainthood then they gave it back he's trying to figure out when he was born yes 2009 2009 mm -hmm. no if he just died he's 15 no he died in 2006 that's why he's a millennial oh, carlos saying. put his name in here well, let's find out when carlos was born when was carlos born carlos a-c-u-t-i-s carlos a-c-u-t-i-s italian boy 1991? May 3rd, 1991. May 3rd. Okay. Oh, I think that makes him an air... No, Taurus. He's a Taurus. Oh, I bet that's not being brought up at the no. Catholic meeting. What <laughs> sign is he? Mm, I don't know. And most Taurus I met don't seem very saintly. <laughs> They're kind of um, stubborn and really kind of not very cooperative when it comes to a group decision. It's their way or the highway. Oh, my God. That's funny. <laughs> I was thinking more of a Libra or a Pisces. <laughs> I'm sure, uh, I'm sure the Pope would kick me out of the meeting as soon as I brought that up. Does that make him an Aries or a Taurus? <laughs> uh, wow. So, yeah, there you go. He's going to be the patron saint of the uh, Internet because that's what he devoted his life to. And he's a Taurus. Um, <laughs> here's a little more news. U.S. News and World Report. Everybody does pay attention to this one ranks the best and worst states for 2024. Just in general? Well, this is what they base it on. Okay. Uh, they have, um, oh, my gosh. <laughs> um, oh, my gosh. Mm, they go through, this is what is based on, healthcare, education, natural environment, opportunity, ec economy, crime, and corrections. Crime and corrections. Huh? Oh, yeah. Infrastructure and fiscal stability. Uh -huh. The analysis encompassed thousands of data points across 71 metrics in eight categories to capture the 50 states, how the 50 states serve their residents. Okay. Um, as was the case in 2023, Utah's consistency helped it make it king. Utah's number one. Wonderful. The state landed in the top 10 um, in five categories, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. 
Here's the best states to live according to this. Okay. Well, let me see if I agree. Utah. I just don't agree because I don't like the weather. Yeah. I don't like the cold, cold or the hot, hot. And mm-hmm. their they're hot is hot. They're real hot. It's like the desert hot. Yeah. And then it gets cold, cold. And I don't know. No. Nope. Um, I, don't, I don't know enough about Utah, really. I've never been to Park City. I've never been to any of those places. You're going to um, go. Uh, I am gonna go. gonna go when I go do Salt Lake in the fall. Yeah. I've all, I've performed there a bunch, yeah. and it's been, been great. Wonderful. Yeah. Um, number two, New Hampshire. Too small. I don't even know when I'm in it, except Hampton Beach, New Hampshire. Is there thing, live or die? Or- New Hampshire, their their license plate is <laughs> "Live Free or Die." Yeah. Hey, simmer down at the license plate meeting, okay? <laughs> Like, we don't need to get that crazy on a goddamn license plate. It's supposed to say, like, the Beehive State, the Cardinal State, Dogwoods, forever. Now, let free or die. It's so, I think it's New Hampshire that has that. Always ready to Number three, Nebraska. Oh, Lincoln. Oh, Omaha. I can't take the cold. I can't do it. No. And four, Minnesota. I can't take the cold. Pretty, though. Gorgeous, 10,000 lakes. Yeah. The people, super odd, but super smart. Super they are very strange. Super weird. Proof, look at all the comedians from Minnesota. Very, yeah. Tell me they're normal. No. Mitch Hedberg, no. loved yeah. him, but very yeah. bizarre. Maria Bamford, love her, but you know, yeah. what are we doing? Jessica Lange. Nick Schwartz, one of my favorite people. Yeah. Yeah. People, not just comedian. He would walk around West Hollywood in his Vikings horn helmets, like on a Wednesday. I'm like, Nick, there's no football on today. Not in. He's not like, in football season. No, we're not even. <laughs> Do you want to join my bombardment league? We're 50. <laughs> I actually do. Thanks for asking. Five, Idaho. Look at them picking all these cold states. Yeah. I, what are we supposed to do for the people with Renauds? I can't be living in Idaho. I don't have enough wherewithal to dress like that every day. It's too hard. Six, Iowa. I like the people. There are parts of Iowa that are not that pretty. It's no. extremely flat. Yeah. It's farming. Yeah. There's, you can find card. Card. Oh, carn. Carn. I mean, they're responsible for breakfast. So is Nebraska. You should thank them every day you get up. Responsible um, for yeah. I think all that wheat in your cereal is coming from. Hmm? <laughs> wow. Seven, Vermont. Pretty. Too small. I've only been there once, at Rutledge, Vermont. I did a show in Rutledge. It was, yeah, it's pretty. You're going there this fall. Eight, Washington. I agree with that, the state of Washington, because it's not freezing. Right. Nine, Florida. Hold my beer. I can't. No. I, no, Florida, I can't. There's happen. too much going on down there. Mm-hmm. It's fun for a week. Yep. Ten, Massachusetts. <sighs> Expensive. I love, Massachusetts. I love it. Yes. I could eat chowder every day and weigh 500 pounds. Beautiful. But... It's not cheap. No. I don't know how this one got snuck in. <laughs> but I, I can't agree with this list because I don't like the cold. But that's just me. Okay. Here's the 10 lowest rank. These are going to be my favorites, I guarantee you. <laughs> <laughs> I guarantee it. Louisiana. Oh, wait. Yeah, Louisiana. I love it. Number one. Yep. yep. New Mexico, I don't know a thing about it. Nope. Nope. Never been there. And then when I asked to work there, I'm told that I won't <laughs> sell any tickets. And they're sending Gabriel Iglesias. Right. That's what I'm told. Yep. So if you have a problem with that, email my agency. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't. Don't. They try. 48, Mississippi. Yeah. Mississippi yeah. needs Mississippi needs a um, love it or leave it. Uh-huh. Love it or list it. Love it or list it. Uh-huh. We're going to love it. Okay. Because the weather is totally doable. Yep. Um, and I think if we just took a – like there's so many people in the Northeast. Uh-huh. Like I go to Mississippi – or Alabama, yep. and go, if we could get a bunch of those people Please. and just move them to Biloxi. Relocate them. Yes. Yes. It's there for the taken. And the weather's, you know, it's. I love the humidity and heat, though, so right. I don't need to be talked into that. No. Um, but, I mean, East Coast people are familiar with heat and humidity. Mm-hmm. They can do it. <laughs> 47, Arkansas. I, I really, Arkansas is beautiful. It needs more people. Yep. Needs a lot more people. Yep. West Virginia, same thing. West yep. Virginia's picking up, though. It's yep. sneaking around, yep. and I'm going there to Charlestown. West Virginia, it's right there next to D.C. Yeah. Come on, guys. Go. It's gorgeous, especially because the remote working. It used to be, oh, well, West Virginia is coal mining. We all the miners left. Okay. Mm-hmm. Well, we don't need to be coal miners right there. Nope. 45, Alaska. 
Beautiful. Gorgeous, but it's real weird. Though. You're gonna go crazy. Yeah. It's dark. It's, 22 yeah. hours in, and it's light. Large, 22. Large hours. I spent bears. time there doing the club, and then I did a college gig in Fairbanks, and everybody I, there is crazy, and that includes relatives. Everybody I met at the bar was on the run. I know that for sure. <laughs> They'd be like, "Well, I got some legal trouble down in Georgia. A lot of Southern accents," and they went as far as they could go. Was still being in, in in the United States. Yep. 44 Alabama. No, I I like I love Alabama. Beautiful. Yep. And it just needs some more people. Great golf. But also great golf? Yeah. Come on, people. Yeah. These people aren't doing enough. It's because their economies aren't good. That's why they get ranked so shitty. Right. But bring the economy to them. Right. 43 Oklahoma. I don't know. I'll check out Oklahoma City. I'll I'll render a decision. <laughs> Michigan. I love Michigan and I can handle their coldness. I don't like the length of it. It goes from like September 30th to May 30th. I thought you meant the same. The no, the no, the length of their winters. <laughs> 41, South Carolina. I absolutely love it. Amazing. Amazing. Um, Charleston, how do you do that? Um, Rise up. Uh, Rise up, Southerners. <laughs> West Virginia was ranked 46 overall, was number 16 in opportunity, number 18 in fiscal stability, while Alaska was ranked number 21 in fiscal stability, and Mississippi was number 20 in natural environment. I don't know. I don't agree. But I don't think these they're basing it on what I'm basing it on. No. I'm basing it on how many pairs of uh, wool socks do I need to wear. Exactly. If it's more than one, nope. 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 Hard no. All right. I'm going to save these for um, next week. Okay. Yeah. All right, termites. This is a lovely. We've learned a lot today. We have. Sorry if it was a little hard. No. But you need to know if there's going to be a saint, what does he have to do? He's already done his two miracles from the dead. Uh -huh. And he devoted his life, apparently, to, to Catholicism. Yep. So we're going to do two quotes and get out of here. And the internet. And the internet. Mm -hmm. um, Taylor Swift. This is on her Red Tour in 2013. No matter what happens in life, be good to people. Being good to people is a wonderful legacy to leave behind. Oh, Thank like you. it. Good Thank job, you. Tay-Tay. Tay-Tay. Um, I'll mark that that I read. All right. I'll mark it. Dolly. Let's find a good one. Um, oh, reflection on her fitness regime, regime in an interview with the Times. There's only one sort of exercise I like, and it ain't jogging. <laughs> if I jogged, I'd end up with two black eyes. Oh, it's okay. Uh, That's before the sports bra was invented. Yeah, that was way before the sports what bra. Even, uh, what are you she doing does this week? That. You got dax. I'm going to West Hampton, um, and you want to see Luke? I'm, Luke? no, Lewis is on the, Lewis will be in Los Angeles, so I can't mm -hmm. see my BFF when I go to New York, which sucks. He's going to be doing the Inside Out premiere in his, in his what soon should be a red jacket, because I'm going to call him and say, if I see a picture of you online <laughs> at that premiere in anything other than red, mm -hmm. um, I'm going to send a hateful email. Challenge flag. Yep, and I'm going to tweet about it. Oh. Yep. I'm going to put white in this jackass wear red, like I told him to. <laughs> He's all excited. Thanks. And I guess the reviews of Inside Out 2, if you liked Inside Out 1, is Inside Out 2 is even better. Lou never knows because he just reads his part in a sound studio. He doesn't really see the whole deal. They're never allowed. It's all very top secret. He doesn't even, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, very, 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 very secret. Did you go to a bank scene? museum or something? I'm going to go to this Banksy museum in New York. I'm not sure if it's like uh for reals, mm -hmm. but it's only 30 bucks. I don't, they, they did reproduce some of his paintings on walls, so it's not really his, yeah. but I do think there's some original stuff in there. Cool. Yeah. And even if it's a reproduction, I still want to see it, mm -hmm. but I don't know. I saw some pictures online of things about it. And I was like, maybe I just bought into a scam. It's yeah. possible. I could go in a building and be murdered. Yeah. I don't know. And, uh, send me a pin drop before you go. Lou <laughs> hadn't heard of it. Yeah. No. So I don't know about all that. Okay. Anyway. And then uh, West Hampton. West Hampton. Will you be joining me in Hampton? <laughs> <laughs> so great. Um, yeah, it's a tiny theater out in West Hampton. Cool. We'll see if, what happens. And great. everybody will have a fun little summer. And right. there you go. All right. All right. That's it. Fire, 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 fire. And night, night, time.